Warning, the show you are about to listen to contains spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, everybody. Holy shit, it's been two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and this past week for me personally has been a kick in the ass as far as my podcasts go, because I didn't, I managed to not get any of them out because, uh, because just life kicking various co-hosts in the proverbial booty. Yes. Ah. I mean, and, and, and the thing is, it's it, it just one of those things that happens to just happen in, in, in mm-hmm. whatever, so, oh, uh, but at least because, uh, because these are part of the stuff I put on my Patreon page, and they, they, I think I even say on there I do like twenty to twenty-five a month, for, you know, in terms of productions, counting these podcasts. So I, I do have filler, so it's it's not too big a deal. <laughs> At least not for me. Uh, so yeah, the past two weeks they have they have been a thing. They have been a thing. I'm gonna get the shortest one out of the way first because. If my notes only devoted like two paragraphs to them, and that's Carly and Franco. Oh, because where we last left, Franco was going in to tell Michael about Sonny. Because why the hell not? Yeah, because you know, because the Franco that loves Carly was was taking a backseat to the Franco that just wants to, you know, bitch slap Sonny and show that he's a bare man, you know, the, the rah, 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 rah thing. Yeah, but. Carly ended up showing up in the nick of time. And, of course! And while that's going on, Michael is called off to the brownstone, which we'll get to in a little bit. <laughs> and and Franco justified his telling Mikey, you know, because Mike, Mikey deserves to know about Sonny and, and be free from his influence and all of that. And Carly's like, you fucking hypocrite! You know, yeah. Because if Michael knew about Sonny, he'd also realize that Carly covered it up. Yeah. You know, but they make up, and then he finally reveals that he got the job at GAH thanks to him giving Obrecht, you know, you know, the egg salad. And we finally find out what it is that Franco was hired to do, and it's basically art therapy. Which I think is awesome. Yeah, it, it works. And, and, you know, he's able to keep his artist thing going, help other people, even if he doesn't have much of a talent for it anymore. Yeah. So, you know, hey, that's, that's, that's a good thing. Oh, oh, so yeah, Obrek, Obrek hasn't had much to do these past couple of weeks. I mean, yeah. out, you know, outside of, uh, well, not even, uh, well, I, I guess a little bit with, uh, Brit and all of that, because, you know, Elizabeth got her job back, and then Brit and Spencer, they, they had this little thing. Where they wanted to, where they were, you know, trying to get Nicholas and Britt to get together on the 4th of July. And it worked because apparently Britt called in a favor to her mother to have Elizabeth work that night. Yeah. And uh, I, I think it's just so cute that, uh, you know, Britt got Spencer in on this because uh... <laughs> it's so cute. Um... Oh, but hey, you know what? At least it's better than what o- some of the things Obrecht was, you know, ver- was trying to put towards Brit previously. You know, you know, using the sex appeal and and, and using, you know, possibly killing Elizabeth is like no, <laughs> no, no, no. It will end. Uh, but she's like Cameron. If Nicholas or uh, Spencer, if Nicholas marries Elizabeth, Cameron's gonna be your brother. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, uh, and at this point, at that point, we also hear, you know, that Pat Emma finally fa- learns from Patrick that he and Robin are going to get a divorce. Yeah. And it's like, oh. Um. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be sad, Emma, but you know what? Fuck that bitch. You know, <laughs> Robin, really. And I, I, I'm sure Kimberly McCullough is 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 awesome, and it sounds like she's got. A wonderful career going, but really, if her if she's so busy and they're not willing to recast the character, they need to just get <coughs> rid of her all together. Like yeah. write her out in a more permanent way, 
or kill her off or something. Because just this, you know, bring her back for a few weeks and then, oh, look, suddenly there's shenanigans and she has to be gone for a while is, yeah, it's dumb. Yeah, but I, I do hope maybe they could bring her back just at least one more time, at least to put a little bit of closure on her relationship with Patrick. I did read somewhere that um, she's showing up sometime this summer. Yeah, along with Deeply. yeah, along with Mister My Brothers and I tried to freeze the world. Oh yay! But for those who are new, that's Victor Cassadine. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> uh, and and uh, oh, who was it? Yeah, Spencer and Emma ended up getting a little bit of quality time together too, mm-hmm. which that was kind of cute. I guess a little bit. <laughs> oh. Although I, I was kind of scratching my head about that because I'm like, okay, are they going to pursue the whole Spencer and Jocelyn thing at all? Or was that just an idea that flitted across somebody's head and then they forgot about it because they got distracted by something shiny? I don't know, but we'll, we'll, we'll definitely find out as things go on. Yeah. Oh lordy. <laughs> and oh god, I'm I'm still looking over some of my other notes as well. Yes, I am finally taking notes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, the biggest one's going to be coming a little bit later because my biggest, the biggest amount of the most amount of notes I've got for these past two weeks has to do with Silas and Rafe and Sam and all of that. Well, between them and the Quartermains, this these past yeah. two weeks, they're, they're my biggest ones. In terms of notes, but I'm not going to get to them yet. But I will get to somebody that, you know, I'll get to one area that actually has somebody that is a little bit more involved, that has been involved at least with one of the characters. That would be Ava, and we hear Ava. We go to Sunny, and Delia showing up, of course. Yes. The the, the mystery guest happened to be Delia because Ava's like, "Mommy, come help me." <laughs> <laughs> and, and they put together this plan to get the flash drive from Sonny. And, and at first, you know, while Sonny's gone, they somehow tear the house apart looking for it without the guards stopping them somehow. I guess I guess yeah. they're only paid to make sure she doesn't leave the house. Which, if that's all they're doing, then they're doing their job. Yeah. That's fine. You know, I guess there was I guess nothing could be said about you know snooping through Sonny's shit. Which I wouldn't be surprised if he anticipated that. It's true. No, I'm. I'm. I would not be surprised to know how much he anticipated. You know, at the end of all of this. But after you know coming up fruitless, and of course Sonny is just rubbing everything in whenever he can. Can't really blame him for that. No. Oh God. <laughs> Oh, and and the way Delia gets there, Ava's like, yeah, I'm moving my mother. And son is like, what the fuck are you talking about, woman? <laughs> and then he realizes that Ava really can't stand Delia, and Ava can't leave. So he changes his tune rather quickly. He's like, yes. oh, Delia, you can stay here. Call me Sonny. <laughs> Delia is awesome. I love her. Per- I love her personality. Yes. And I love the fact that she has some hidden depths, because once. Once um, once uh, Ava convinces Delia to go up to the offices at, at, at the, at the uh, hotel, you know, Delia's able to get in there. She's looking around for the flash drive or whatever, and then they realize, oh, shit, safe. And since the office used to belong to Julian, Ava can tell Delia where the safe is. Mm-hmm. And Delia's like, oh, I'll just, I'll just open this thing. And Ava's like, what the fuck are you talking about, woman? You can't do that. <laughs> but lo and behold, she does. And I like how Ava, not Ava, but uh, Delia was so tempted to make off with some of the money. Yes. But she's like, no, 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 no. Just need the flash drive. And she got it. And right as she was, I guess, getting ready to go, the lights come on and in comes Olivia. <laughs> 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 Who would just come from visiting Lulu and Dante, which the, the biggest thing between the two of them for two of them this week, I can take a little side tangent because it's like a couple of sentences. Lulu surgery went well. You know the procedure went well. Lulu can bear her child. You know if 
if if at all possible if you know if they want to implant the embryo in her that doesn't say anything about whether or not she could do it naturally i don't know but yeah they were kind of vague about that yeah so sure but either way if lulu gets pregnant she's fine so yay so hooray on that <laughs> retcon woo yay well uh, i don't i don't want to say it's not necessarily a retcon it's more like we f- we're fixing this shit, so we can so in case uh, um once her name Emma Emma Ryland gets pregnant, we can actually see about writing it into the show instead uh, of just magical well, pregnancy or magical holy shit. How the hell did that happen? I I really do see it as a retcon because you know part of her character was that she can't carry a child to term. Yeah. Well, and they're like, oh, you were misdiagnosed. Yeah. Which, just based on the law of averages, I would assume it happens in real life a lot. Just based on the number of people on this planet, the number of doctors, human error, it probably happens more often than we think. But so that's that's also it's a simple case if they wrote in a misdiagnosis. I don't consider it so much of a retcon, but but I, I guess that's just the difference. Somebody out there will, will say something. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> but as I as I was saying, <laughs> as I was saying, um, Olivia Olivia catches Delia in the office and she immediately calls Sunny. Smart. Yes. And Sunny gets down to the office after. I oh, don't know. Wait, I think it was. I'm trying to think. No, wait. Sunny gets down to the office, and Delia tries to call Ava, but Sunny's like, "Nope." Takes the phone. No. Ava calls Delia. That's to right. To find out, uh, you know, you know, did you did you get it yet? Did you get it yet? And Sunny answers the phone and says something snarky and makes uh, basically makes Ava think he's gonna hurt her mother. <laughs> Yeah, which at the time you don't know. He just might. I mean, eh, I really don't think that uh, he would do so. I, I think Sonny's smart enough to recognize that uh, Delia is harmless as long as she's separated from Ava. Ava. Yeah, although I do like when Delia was first searching the office, her phone went off, and she just, she just. Apparently, he regressed back to 2007 and said, "Don't tase me, bro." <laughs> it's like this is this is this, this seven years. I think Delia is seven years behind in pop culture. <laughs> I think, for the most part. <laughs> but oh yeah, and and it's like Delia and Olivia were sitting there while waiting for Sunny. They're just comparing neighborhoods and how tough each of them are and it's like uh, and it's like my tits are bigger than your tits my tits are double the size that yours is <laughs> which is probably the worst kind of, of 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 organ comparison ever because i mean yeah okay you you know when you when you hear guys get into a dick measuring contest or whatever you don't see the dicks they don't see each other's dicks they just assume women you 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 all kind of have them just like kind of right out there for the most part <laughs> For the most part, I mean, if if you bind them well enough and wear loose enough clothing, you can hide them. But but these two characters was not the case. <laughs> That's a hell of a tangent right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Sonny has Sean take Delia back to New York, and he, he basically says, "Yeah, Ava, uh, ha, ha, you're not calling anybody from now on. I'm taking your phone privileges." And Which Ava's you like, should have done in the first place, like. Seriously, I – when she grabbed her phone to pull it out and make made the call that turned out to be Adelia, I was like, why does she still have a phone? Mm-hmm. No, really, why does she still have a phone? Sunny, you're a little slow on the uptake. Maybe. Because really, what do you expect? Yeah. But he also knows that who is, who is Ava going to call that would actually be willing to help her? Because Carlos is in prison. Julian is against her. Kiki wants very little to do with her. Morgan hates her. You know, 
And they, and until recently, we never thought we never would have. At least I never would have suspected she would call Delia because of how the those two relationship. Bleh, or yeah, I am Englishing good tonight, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and I swear I've not had any alcohol yet. Oh, but at any rate, because of Ava's relationship with her mother, you know, you wouldn't think that she would be calling her mother, but lo and behold, she did. Oh, and I do like the idea is of uh, Delia taking a look at uh, Mike, Sonny's father, you know, a picture mm. of Mike. And the fun fact is the, the, the guy, uh, Ron Hale, is the actor who plays Mike. He also played a character named Roger on Ryan's Hope, which is where Delia's from. Oh, okay. So that was just a, a nod to the audience. Yes. There were several <laughs> Ryan's Hope nods to the audience throughout uh, Delia's time in Port Charles. Even, even during the... the uh, Breast measuring contest, as I'm going to call it. <laughs> you know, there were there were some things in there. It's like, okay, I don't recognize some of the some of these things. So it's like, okay, that's got to be a Ryan's Hope shout out there because I never watched it. Uh, oh. I think my mother did, but you know, it's not like I'm asking. It's not like I'm going to be able to ask her. Yeah, what happened? Blah 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 blah. Because that would be spoiler territory for her. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I keep up to date. She's usually a week or two behind. So yeah. <laughs> Oh, and speaking of Sean, oh dear, Sean, Sean, Sean. Another, another, another bit where I don't have too much in my notes, but, but of course it's noteworthy because uh, he and Jordan they literally run each, run into each other in the park. They talk about TJ and, and of course he tries to get her to stop working for the drones and, and and he. Even after Rick's frame up, and he even goes so far as basically challenges her to quit working for them for TJ's sake. Uh-huh. And then she turns around and calls out Sean on his hypocrisy because, hey, you work for Sonny, yet he's demanding she quit working for Sonny. Work. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, ah, uh-uh, no, 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 no. And she tries to go to make good on her threat to tell TJ exactly what happened with his father. And it's looking more and more like. That maybe TJ's father wasn't really his father. That maybe his father is really Sean. Or at the very least, the two of them slept with each other. At yeah, some the, point. The, the, the reason for the split was because uh, Sean and uh, Jordan might have had an affair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like I said, I have here on my notes the two of them had an affair behind TJ's father's back, which. Yeah, I, I'm sure that's definitely part of it. <laughs> but what I didn't think of when I was writing my notes down was uh, is that maybe Jordan and, and Sean again, Sean. It'd be I would not be surprised if it turned out he was the father. Yeah, it would depend because uh, it would. Yeah, I don't know. It, a lot would depend on timelines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and one other thing about Jordan, at least what I've got for the past two weeks, uh, I think that's it. <laughs> but uh, one other thing, you know, she runs into Anna in the park, you know, or Anna meets her in the park because that's how you do things. Because they're both stupid, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's... And wonder of wonders, meeting an undercover operative in a public place kind of backfires. OMG, yeah. who could have fucking seen that coming? Uh-huh, finally it happens, but but apparently Mickey doesn't, you know, she bullshits her way out of it somehow. Yeah. Even though she mentions in the conversation that Mickey has constantly got his eye on her. Yes. And she's still doing this. It's like, eh. Although apparently while he has his eye on her, he is not paying attention to much more than her tits or her ass. You know. Yeah. But um, but hey, you know what? She said Anna was harassing her, which, given the body language, if he really was keeping an eye on them as much as she claims he was, I think he just kind of missed. You know, it's like, Phew. yeah, you you don't do body language very well, do you, buddy? At least not at, at least not at range. Close up, maybe. So uh, she she then you know gets him to invite her to dinner or actually well i don't think he she gets him to do it he does it pretty much on his own because she wants to talk yeah. business and they make a date it's like 
hey, <laughs> you know, and if it works, then it works. Meanwhile, yeah. Anna's going to go talk to Frisco Jones over at the WSB. Oh, dear. So, yeah, the WSB is in again. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. WSB, uh, everybody sucks. Yeah, Every- so, many, so many idiot balls being thrown around. Yep. Speaking of balls being thrown around, let's let's bring up Lucas and Felix. <laughs> <laughs> segue. <laughs> yes, I can actually segue on this show sometimes. Oh, but yeah, again, these, these, I don't have many of my notes for them, like a few paragraphs. But but uh, we we find out that Felix spent the night with Lucas, and while well, they I didn't sleep together, spent the night. Spent the night. They. Yeah, they they were drinking wine and watching Golden Girls because yes. of course they were. Because why not? Let's throw let's throw out a good gay stereotype in there, which I will give the writers credit. They had Felix defend the fact that they were watching Golden Girls. It's like, hey, you know what? You know, every, everybody fucking enjoys the Golden Girls. Shut the fuck Girl, up. Golden Girls are the shit, man. Yeah. Come on. I, I'm not. I am not going to challenge that. Me neither. <laughs> I, I loved that show. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. And one, you know, they they do the talking and everything, and and <laughs> Lucas gets compared to Blanche, you know, because it's promiscuous. Yeah, he's like, eh, I can see that, yeah, just a little bit. And as Felix gets ready to leave, pop, Brad pops on by with coffee, because. Brad just does not want to give up on Lucas. And Brad is an idiot in the way he goes about it, yes. Yeah, like, like you know, Felix leaves, you know, I, I, I think he's gone by that point. And once he's gone, Brad just, he's, he's like, you know, yeah, 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 he's, he's like, you and Felix spent the night, right? And Lucas is like, yeah, but he slept on the couch. And then Brad does what? What, uh, you know, just any other horny gay Asian dude would do, he snogs Lucas right then and there. Because that's how you do things, isn't it? I mean, I mean, isn't that what you would do? Like, like if you found out that I, I was like, spending the night with somebody else, what would you do? You would, you would snog me right then and there, wouldn't you? You know, I feel like Brad, like, his method of, like, flirting is either being uh, creepily stalkerish or borderline sexual assault. Yeah. Like, those are the only things that he understands. Yeah. Naturally, Lucas does give him a grand what the fuck. And, and eventually, after a little bit of heated argument and some peppering from Brad, Lucas does admit that he's not completely over Brad. And yeah. that's because, you know, feelings are complicated. You know, that happens. And when Lulu goes to visit him and, and she tells him the good news, of course, because you know, everybody's getting to know the good news. And she tells Lucas, dude, if you like him, go after him. Don't hold back on my account. You know, yeah, yeah he was part of a horrible thing that happened. He's not my favorite person, but if you like him, go for him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So he goes off to the hospital because, you know, Lulu is seeing it. She's like, yeah, you know what? You like both of them. It sounds like you've made up your mind on which one you want. So he heads over to the hospital. Meanwhile, you know, Brad and Felix get into an argument. And Brad is just railing on Felix for just being, you know, kind of, you know, more conservative, more, more, more um, prudish, I guess, for lack of a better term. Uh-huh. And... And Brad is like, you know what? You lack passion, and it just knocks Felix right there, right as Again, Felix comes in. Like the, these are the only things he understands. It's like, what the fuck? Borderline sexual assault. I'm telling you. Yeah, and of course Lucas gets pissed. He starts storming out. Brad, Brad tracks him down, tries to talk to him a bit. Felix comes up. He he says his piece, and then the two Brad and Felix start look like they're starting to fight over Lucas, and Lucas is like, you know what, fuck this shit, I'm out of here. Yeah, smart man. Yeah, it's like, dude, what the motherfuck? <laughs> it's like, jeebus. Ugh. And Lucas, at least he is self-aware enough to realize he's in a love triangle. Yes. And he's like, I don't like this. 
Oh, poor Lucas. I, I just, although I do like the, the, the nickname that Felix gave Brad was a, a hungry, hungry hippo homosexual. No, yes. wait. <laughs> no, it was, Brad gave it to Felix. Oh, that's right, yeah. Because Brad's assuming that Felix is like him and after Lucas and wanting to bang him. And I was like, it's not like that. And the thing is, Brad should know because yeah. he, he's been with Felix. He's The two of them have dated a couple of times. It's like, you should know a little bit better. Come on, man. Oh, lordy. Brad is kind of unhinged at this point. Yeah. It's like, dude, dude, just stop. <laughs> Speaking of people who should just stop, fucking Levi. Oh, please write him out. Please let him get deported and then let's never see him again. Please. Yeah, and it all started when he convinces Maxie. Even though Maxie seemed to be waffling, it's like at first she was like not completely committed to sparkle motion. But then Levi looks at her or does something and she's like, you know what, fuck it, I'm staying here. And Michael, who had been called down to the brownstone by Morgan and Kiki because, hi, trespassing. Yeah. Michael gives them plenty of opportunities to leave. And he's like, you know what, fuck this, I'm calling the cops. So he calls the cops, and Nathan and two uniformed officers come in. Yeah, that's awkward. Being yeah. arrested by your roommate. <laughs> Levi gets arrested, taken off to jail. And he goes to arrest Maxie, who is just squirming and resisting and... The other handcuff gets slapped on to Nathan, which, okay, it's not so bad. He just gets the key. Well, the key was knocked somewhere. Okay, we find the key. Can't find the key. All right, we'll go home and get the spare key. Can't drive the car because Maxie is on his left side, and Maxie cannot drive a goddamn stick shift to save her life. <laughs> so they have to walk all the way across town, admittedly seeing the fireworks along the way. Then get home, fall asleep on the couch, and Nathan, for his part, he, he you, know, you know, when she's not looking, or and even sometimes where she is, he, he's just got this look of, oh my god, I love, it. I'm, I'm starting to love this woman. Yes. It's like, yeah, we saw that coming a few months ago. We saw <laughs> it coming. Before she even left, yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah, we knew this. This was happening. And they wake up, and it was like, wake up, cute, and then. And, and apparently they had searched the apartment the night before before collapsing on the couch. Yes. And Levi gets in because they didn't press charges because the police had more important matters to discuss. And, and of course, so did Michael because, eh, well, you know, you're not really going to do anything with charges when you have more important things. So Diane was able to get him released or what have you. And Levi finds the spare key. Yes. It's like, oh! God damn it. <laughs> uh, just, yeah, and and of course Nathan for you know, he didn't want to just go down to the station and get a you know, get a spare key from there because eh, you know. He is still kind of the new guy. And he's got a little bit of pride and and you know what? It is a little justified because after they're separated and he goes to work, he's he's talking to Dante in the locker room about the whole situation. He ends up telling Dante everything and Dante just starts picking on him. <laughs> <laughs> As well he should. <laughs> yes. He's like, really? Really? <laughs> oh, and of course, Dante and Lulu at the same time had went over to visit Maxie to share the good news, of course, and talk about everything. Both Dante and Lulu come to the same conclusion. The two of them have the hots for each other. Yes. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> Duh. Yeah. And, and of and. Before he, before Nathan even went to work, he learned that Levi's visa had expired. Although he's getting a, he's getting that taken care of, supposedly. And oh, and this yeah. is among the other things he tells Dante. And Dante's like, well, why don't you turn him in? He's he's like, you know what? I promised Maxie I wouldn't. And and Dante seems to accept it. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. But then uh, somebody from immigration shows up on Maxie's doorstep. Yeah, I. I maybe I'm I'm wrong, but I didn't think there would have been enough time for Nathan to actually inform. What do you, do, what do you think? Uh, probably not. Because it, it felt like um, those two th that the conversation with Dante and the immigration officer showing 
basically happened at about the same time. Yeah, give or take. You know, it's not too long. I mean, yeah. we don't know. I don't know for sure the actual time skip between the two events, if yeah. any. But I, it, it, I, I am agreeing with you. I don't think there's. I don't think it could have been possible. It might have been somebody from the previous night. Who knows? It might have been Diane. <laughs> Who knows? But yeah. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> And and one thing Dante did note about Nathan, you know, not going down to the station was Anna. Since she's under a lot of scrutiny and he was the one that she had brought in and, and kind of endorsed him a bit or what have you, you know, he didn't want it to look bad on her. Yeah. And that's that is what individually got Dante to be like, Hey, you know what, I I understand that. That's good of you, man. So <laughs> Oh, but the the immigration guy shows up and he's like, you know, uh, Levi Dunkelman lives here, and and Maxie's trying to cover, and out walks Levi. Yeah. And he's just wearing nothing but his underwear, and apparently, I, I admit, I got a glimpse, and it's like, yeah, we can tell you've been using the penis pump. <laughs> yeah. Either that, or um, you have a, re- either that, or you really love Maxie's ass. <laughs> I'm going to guess the latter <laughs> because I'm not going to be that mean. <laughs> uh, and there's the little confrontation. The deportation is going to take a couple of days because, you know, bureaucracy at work. Uh-huh. And, and of course, Maxie immediately, uh, you know, she suspects Nathan, who just happens to walk in the door right after she call, tries to get a hold of Diane oh. to see if she can do anything. And the he he has this look like okay what's going on and she's just like you motherfucker <laughs> you motherfucker uh, which hey you know what if if he does get deported hey no big loss yes I, watch it uh, watch it end up being Mac <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be, be hilarious. hilarious and I'd have to wonder how oh my Mac God. learned it too that that would be another thing uh, but yeah. So I think that covers most of the shorter, shorter stuff, I guess. Um, still, still, st- yeah, I'm, I'm working with notes for the first time with this show, so, and they're a little haphazard, unfortunately, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. But now we get to the bigger stuff, and they, and the, these two things, of course, they're going to end up tying in together at the end, because first of all, uh, Michael was called away from the brownstone at one point because Alice had stopped by ELQ to, I, I guess, to see Michael or, or what have you, and she found Tracy there. You know, And Tracy is being all smug and talking to Luke, and, and of course, she, Tracy has no reason to expect anybody would be there. Mm-hmm. And so she's talking to fake Luke about the waterfront and how she's going to you know, get ELQ back from Michael and backstab and everything. You know, typical quarter main stuff. Typical, let's let's discuss my evil plan out in the open, really loudly, where anyone can hear me, because we're all idiots. Uh, 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 in this case, I can, you know, there is justification. Tracy had no expectation of somebody being there, because of how late it was. You know, no expectations whatsoever. And she also had gotten, you know, the waterfront project from Michael, you know, the folders for that, so she could look it over. And she's like, yeah, this is not going to work. Because even Daddy tried it, and he was like, no. People were like, no. Oh. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. So, so yeah, while she's doing that, Alice walks in, and Alice calls Michael, even though Tracy's like, uh, no, you're not going to call him. And Alice is like, fuck, yes, I am. <laughs> and and as she's calling him, she collapses. Because, Heart of course, attack. she does. Yeah, because heart attack. So, of course, Michael and Morgan race over to ELQ, and I, I think Kiki either goes with them or something else happens, I, or what have you. I'll, I'll look at my notes in just a moment. But they get there. They, you know, Morgan performs CPR on Alice, you know, saves her life. And then they get her to the hospital, and Monica lets them know that, yeah, Alice, is, Alice had a heart attack, and not only that, she's got a bum heart. So yeah. she needs a new one. But considering, you know, how... How severe it is. She's at the top of the donor li- at the top of the waiting list for donors, and by the end of the week they find one. Yeah. Yeah. 
and oh god, that's where the other side comes in. Because oh okay. lordy. <laughs> so yeah, so when when we left off, um, we left off with uh, Sam and Patrick doing their own investigation, trying to figure out uh, who was in the uh, who was driving the car that you know caused the accident. Because the police suck, and two random idiots fucking around on their own can find things better than the cops can. Uh, Yes. And so, they track down um, the uh, body shop where the other car had had work done, and, you know, find out that it was Silas's car. Yep. Well, Patrick, being an idiot, automatically assumes that Silas must know must either be the other driver or know who the other driver is, and so goes off all half cocked. And when he confronts Silas, Silas is like, "Um, what?" Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wait, 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 no, 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 no. And uh, you know, basically, he says that you know he found the damage on the car the morning after the accident, and just assumed that someone else in the complex besides swiped him. Which is a fair assumption. And then through process of elimination, they figure out that it had to have been Rafe. And meanwhile, Rafe is sitting there around the corner listening, and he's like, oh shit, 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 shit. And this was after he had went to Silas to ask for some money for, quote unquote, camp, because, you know, he needs the drugs, man. Mm-hmm. His stress and everything. Oh... And 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 it looked like he and Silas, you know, they were gonna have some moments, you know, they were gonna go to dinner, you know, have you know, have a good time. Silas is you know doing the more parental thing. Uh, so yeah. Oh uh, yeah. and Nina. Oh god, Nina. Yeah. She she of course this has been a couple of weeks for, you know, villainous exposition. Yes. Uh, cause uh, when she when she and Rosalie are in in physical therapy, physical therapist has nothing, no idea what's going on until he starts filling up Nina's leg and just and she just smacks him. Yeah, because that's not suspicious at all. Yeah, but you know she manages to pay him off. He's like, yeah. oh hey, college loans, Woo! which pay which plays into something she says later on, and Rosalie even calls her out on it. And and I'm sitting there, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, Nina's like, oh, come on, college can't be that expensive, right? And and Rosalie's like, oh, you have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> but and, but at least, you know, that is more excusable because, you know, her, you know when, when, when was she last, you know, conscious for a, a good amount of time and it was able to, you know, actually know about these things? What, 94 at the latest? Yeah. So, Plus, yeah. you know, she was also rich her entire life, so. This is true. <laughs> <clears throat> So yeah. <laughs> uh, so Kiki ends up at the apartment at one point. She fills them in on everything that's going on because she was there when everybody came to the conclusion that uh, Rafe had been the one to, you know, you know, drive Patrick and company off the road. Mm-hmm. And so she fills in uh, Nina and, and and of course Rafe bolts. No, Nina was actually. Uh, at the hospital, they they did that at the hospital. I'm I'm again. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still working with my notes. I'll have them better next time. <laughs> oh, and and of course there is some, you know, there, there is some exposition about Stephen Clay, who you know you know his backstory because that's you know his father, and and of course Rosalie, you know she makes this. There's like this show between Rosalie and Nina where Rosalie's like, yeah, Silas is not putting Nina first again. And Nina's like, no, 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 no. Uh, which, of course, you know, Kiki at first is like, okay, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. Uh, so Nina and Rosalie get back to the apartment. Uh, keep in mind, by the time uh, Kiki and, and Nina had had their little exchange, uh, Rafe had fled. He, he ran away to get packed and get the hell out of Dodge. And Nina's up and walking around, and, and she's planning stuff with Rosalie, and it's like, yeah, Rafe is there, isn't he? And sure enough, 
Rafe comes right on out, and he's like, wait, what the hell is going on? And he's heard pretty much everything, how Nina is going to wreck, you know, going to wreck Silas's life and, and how she's going to get back at, at, at Sam and everybody else. And Rafe, of course, he has a good heart. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and he's like, you know, you know, I, what, what, you know, I could probably, you know, tell Silas or whatever. And she just practically leaps across the room, gets into Rafe's face, and I even wrote down the quote for this one: "I'm not explaining anything. What do you have to say about it, baby killer?" Yes. And I, she said that I'm like, oh, bitch, fuck, it's on now. <laughs> it's like, oh shit. But she convinces him to. To let her help him run away, and and, and it would help him because you know if he, he runs away, he won't be any bother because he's desperate and 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 all of that good stuff, and um, and of course to have the ruse, you know, make it look like that he saw her and you know in in his haste to get away, he pushed her over, you know, she has Rosalie just deck Nina. Yeah, and that was you and Rosalie me in the face, yeah. with pleasure. Boom! <laughs> and and once Don, Dante ends up getting involved because hey, he's copying. He happened to be right there. And they go back. They search Silas's place for him. Find Nina. Find that Rafe is not there. Somehow they miss Rafe between that between the apartment and the garage. I guess they went in a different way, or what have you. And uh, once they realize that Rafe was trying to get away, he's at the car. Molly, who had been talking with TJ earlier, TJ let her know everything that was going on, you know, with the drugs and everything. And Molly's like, "Okay, you know what? I need to go talk to Doctor Clay about this. I want, I gotta see if he knows." And she was on her way there. She runs into Rafe. They have, they have words. And she's like, "What, dude? What the fuck, man?" And so he gets in the car, about to run away. And she gets in there hoping that will stop him, and it does for a little bit. And she actually, you know, stops him herself. But then Sam and Dante, uh, you know, just arrive just in time for Rave, you know, not just in time, but but they arrive and they kind of spook him, and he just drives off. Even as Sam is trying to stop the car by standing in front of it, which, you know, if you're not expecting somebody to do that, you know, it's a risk. But yeah. apparently, eh, uh, he was willing to run her over. Because I had desperation. So she and Dante give chase. Rafe is driving like, like insanely fast because, hey, trying to get away. Dante orders a roadblock down the road that they're going on, which surprisingly gets put up rather quickly and efficiently. So, well, yeah, it's important to the plot. Of course. <laughs> the, only, the only time the Port Charles Police Department is competent is when it's important to the plot and whenever all the other times they're holding the idiot ball yeah pretty much <laughs> but but of course rafe and molly happen upon it and this is after rafe confesses to molly that no he was not high on drugs he was put up to it yeah which i'm like wait and, what yeah and regardless of whether he was high or not and and mm. you know you know regardless of this development he still feels like insanely guilty as well he should. Exactly. Because it's like, uh, he probably did it for the drug money or for the drugs because, you know, somebody put him up to it. It's probably somebody from fake Luke's camp because, well, I mean, Ava, I have a feeling that she may not have been even that cold. Yeah. I don't even think Ava would have done it. So it's looking more like fake Luke because that seems a lot more in that character. Uh and no, we don't know who who it was that ordered the hit, ordered Rafe to do it, or got Rafe to do it, or what have you. And before Rafe is actually able to tell Molly, they hit the barricade. Horrible car accident. Both of them are knocked out. And Molly ends up being fine, even though, you know, Alexis is freaked out as fuck, obviously. Sam is freaked uh -huh. out as fuck, obviously. Julian comes back from his trip, and, and he's there to help comfort Alexis and and all of that good stuff. And he and Anna exchange a few words about something. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think I... Maybe I have it in my notes. Um, yeah. You know, Julian just updates Anna, and then they trade a few words, and Anna, for her for her credit, she doesn't buy that Julian's out of the business. 
and then and then Julian just walks off the plot for the rest of the week. <laughs> uh, but we'll see more of him, I'm sure. But it turns out Molly's okay. Rafe, on the other hand, not so much. Yeah. Because you know Sam updates Silas and Patrick and, and everybody, and they all get to the hospital. Rafe's in Rafe's in his room, and in, in, in you know like the room or the area or whatever, and he wakes up from from his from his injury, and you know he starts talking and, and he's apologizing to Patrick because he knows he did wrong. Patrick, of course, he's he, you know I mean this 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 is the kid that killed his son. Yeah. So you know he, he's he's got the, the father's anger there, and and keep in mind this is that's important. Father's anger there, and Ray starts to apologize, and then he starts to divulge a little bit more information, trying to say who put him up to it, and then he has a seizure. Because, because of course. Because convenient. <clears throat> uh, and of course he has a seizure. He has to go into surgery, and it turns out the only neurosurgeon that's quickly available is Patrick. Because, of course. Yeah, and Patrick, eventually, you know, everybody's like, no, shouldn't, you know, shit. And I don't think it's a good idea, but Orecht is like, you know what? He's the only one around here that can do it. If it takes too long for it to get anybody else. Which, you know, she has a point. I mean, it's still not the best, but you know what? You work with what you've got. And that's totally understandable. Yeah. So Patrick gets in there. And, and 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 even after you know Silas is like you know what you fuck him up you fuck up and kill him I will fuck you up. I wish he had said those words exactly, but we all know he didn't. But you know he's thinking them. So Patrick gets in there. The surgery's going, you know, as they are. And in the middle of surgery, Patrick just seems to freeze. And yeah. I don't know if it's like a complete time freeze or if time was lapsing in reality at the same time. But it's, it's, there's like this other self of his, this like evil self. I'm calling it evil self because, you know, Patrick's a doctor and he knows that he should not take matters into his own hands on the table because he knows better. Even knowing that he's working on the kid that ended up killing his son. Yeah. Because doctor. At any rate. He, this is bad side is goading. Yeah, take it justice into your own head. Get justice for Gabriel. Get justice for Sabrina. <laughs> yeah. And then when Patrick snaps back to reality, the the you know the bleeding is going, and he's trying to save him and patch him up. And then then he delivers the news that Rafe is brain dead. Which apparently the writers of the show <clears throat> don't understand what that fucking means. Uh oh. Because the um the uh, God damn it, I can't think of words. Um <laughs> The cliffhanger of the week. Oh no no is... no wait 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 oh, for the wait for the cliffhanger. Sorry. We gotta we gotta okay. go through that everywhere else first. We gotta get okay. through that first. <laughs> so so okay, so Silas, of course, he rages a bit at Patrick because he sees in Patrick's eyes that Patrick wanted to do it. So, of course, he's being pessimistic as I, I admit I probably would be too a little bit. Yeah. You know, and assumes the worst. And Sam is sitting there. Sam is defending him because, well, one, Patrick's her friend, and two, uh, we don't have all the goddamn facts. <laughs> so she is a PI, you know, she deals in facts. Uh, sure. And, and the news and news gets around. Of course, Kiki finds out, and she goes to see him, and she says her goodbyes to Rave. Sam says her goodbyes to Rave. They leave Silas alone with him because you know he asked them to. Mm-hmm. And and Nina comes in at, while they're all gone. You know, after Silas has vowed possible vengeance on Patrick if Patrick is you know he really did do the de- do the dirty deed. And Nina just starts scheming, you know, she starts working the, uh, but Sam does, Sam believes the opposite of you. Yeah. You believe she did it, she doesn't agree with you. How is this going to work? Oh my. Oh, and meanwhile, Sam, you know, she catches Patrick as he's on his way out. And she gets him to talk to her about it, you know, apologizing profusely because of the timing and Patrick's like, no, 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 no. You, you need to know. You, des- you it's your, it's okay to ask. You deserve to know. 
Mm-hmm. And he tells her that, yeah, he was tempted, but he didn't do it. Yeah. And the look on his face, I I tend to believe that. Yeah. Because cause <laughs> from what I've seen of Patrick, he's a decent guy. <clears throat> I don't think he would intentionally do it. I agree. Because go back, going back to that space out moment for a bit there, he could have spaced out and maybe did it without realizing it. <laughs> so he doesn't know that he did it if he did. If that makes any sense, you know? Yeah. So it could be that. And and for Nina's – Nina had some bit of foreshadowing these past couple of weeks too. Like there was one point where she told um, she told uh, Silas to not underestimate a person's longing for revenge. And it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these are warning signs and he doesn't even know it. Um, yeah. So, so everybody clears out of Alice's room. This is we're gonna pick up and you know intertwine these two together now. So everybody picks up, moves, gets out of Alice's room so she can rest, and you know, Ke- and then and it's at that point Kiki go has gone to go and check on Silas and Rafe and everybody. So Michael goes back in to grab his cell phone and Trey in not Tracy, but Alice tries to tell Michael what she had saw, seen at ELQ. And mm-hmm. and even Michael's like, No, no, you need to you need to rest, you know, no stress and Alice is like, dude, if I don't if I keep holding this in, that's gonna be more stressful. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> <laughs> So Michael's like, Alright, alright. And while this is going on, Kiki delivers the bad news that Rafe is brain dead and and, and he's he's not gonna wake up ever. And Tracy Holy shit She's like, Wait, was he an organ donor? Yeah. It's almost like she's like vulture like. It's like, oh shit. Okay, we need to save Alice. Oh yeah. And Kiki is a lot more understanding eventually. She and Morgan understand a little bit more because yeah, Rafe's not gonna wake up. You know, he's not gonna recover as far as they know. So you know, you know, it's difficult and the timing is really horrible. And even Tracy admits, yeah, I know I know this looks really bad and it looks really horrible, but, you know, Alice needs a heart if he can help her, and, you know. You know, so so they all they all have a conversation. Tracy Tracy at one point rushes in, gets Michael, says, "Hey, you know what? We might have a heart." And and he's like, "Wait, wait, what? Really?" Yeah, Rafkovic. What? Kiki's cousin. And, and he fills yeah. him in, and it's like, oh, somebody's got to find out, okay, what's his blood type? Everybody's like, okay, somebody needs to go tell. And Kiki's like, you know what? Fuck this shit. I'm going to go because, you know, if anybody's going to do it, it's going to be me because, yeah. you know, her father. And she goes, she talks to him, you know, brings him outside the room, leaving Nina alone in the room with Rafe, which will be important in just a moment. And 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 she asks pretty much beats around the bush a little bit, you know, all condolences, talking and, and everything. And then she she's like, "What was Rafe's uh, blood type?" Turns out that Rafe has the exact same blood type as Alice. What a coincidence that I totally didn't see coming. Yeah, everybody was seeing that coming, but what I did not see coming was while this is all going on, Nina's in the in the room with Rafe, pretty much thanking him for dying for the cause of helping her get revenge on Silas. Yeah. You know, because he's never going to be able to tell. And then suddenly he grabs her hand and wakes the fuck up. Yes, because, okay, there are only two options here at this point. Mm-hmm. Either... The writers do not fucking understand what being brain dead means, or Rafe was misdiagnosed. I'm going to take a third option. And just think about that for a second. What? What's that? I'm going to take a third option and and guess what a lot of other people are guessing that Nina is hallucinating and she is fucking bug nuts. Okay, I suppose that's a possibility too. But if it's if it is legit, if it's not a hallucination. Then, then, like I said, the only possibilities are either that you know the uh, the writers don't understand what being brain dead means, or Rafe was misdiagnosed. And think about how terrifying that should be for anybody else that goes to get treated at General Hospital. 
Yeah, very much so. Because when you're brain dead, you are dead, okay? Your brain, nothing. It cannot physically recover. Brain dead people do not open their eyes. And they don't grab your hand. Yeah, so if everyone at the hospital is so fucking incompetent that they diagnose someone who is not brain dead as being brain someone who can open their eyes and move their hands as being brain dead everyone in that hospital should run away screaming yeah <laughs> just oh god damn so you know yeah writers it, please tell me this is going to be just a hallucination otherwise there there is going to be some pissed off flying out because that yeah. you know science does not work that way but I'm willing to bet it's a hallucination. Bro, and... do you even science? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that actually, well, with the notes, it actually managed to ease, more easily fill up an hour. Woo! So we're almost out of time. <laughs> well, of course, there's also two weeks' worth of notes, too. So. Yeah. So, again, yes, I keep mentioning notes because before I went mostly by memory. Now I have the notes here with me, and they're – like I've said, if you saw the files, because there's like three of them, I have ones for individual weeks, and then I have one that's supposed to be for the show. Yeah, that didn't work out too well. <laughs> but that's okay. We will work with it next week. And I mention this because I want you guys, you know, I want to be transparent with you guys so you know exactly, you know, what goes into this. Because, hey, because if you're sitting there like, oh, man, what the hell is he talking about? And it's, it's like, I'm working with notes now, you know, the little haphazard. But it's been a while since I've actually taken notes for more than just like a video game or a movie. <laughs> so, you know, ten, you know, nine days worth of notes, basically. Yeah. So it, it's something to get back into. Oh, so, yes. Uh, there, there are a few things I do want to do actually uh, praise for the past couple of weeks. For one, I always love Franco. I don't care what anybody else says. I like Franco. I'm with you on that one. Yes. Oh. Uh, and the the whole bit with Nathan and Maxie and, and like especially the confrontation at the Brownstone when when Levi and Maxie were sitting there protesting or or sitting in protesting with yeah. both Michael and Morgan just like they're just sitting sitting there and snarking everywhere and making the statements and I was like, Oh god, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I, I, I even wrote down a little bit of a, a comparison for Levi, because because Mikey does everything he can to put Levi's mind at ease, and then the motherfucker just doubles down and stays there, and, and like 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 a stubborn fundy who knows that they're losing an argument on the internet. Well, and I'm sorry, but like Levi has done no research. He he knows absolutely nothing. He's just making wild assumptions. Yeah. And, like, Dude. and you know, doing all of this so he can feel self-righteous and better than everybody. And I really hate him. Yeah. And, of course, not just self-righteous and, and, and be above everybody else, but to impress Maxie. Yeah. Because why not? <laughs> One thing that Lulu, that Maxie did talk to Lulu about about the the Fourth uh, of July night was that she didn't squeal when I think it was he had killed his stepmother. Like I think that's what I've got here. Yeah, and I believe his stepmother was Claudia. Mm -hmm. Claudia Zakara, who I believe was going after somebody. I could have been Carly, and Michael just brained her, brained her, and ended up killing her. Yeah. So you know he was trying to. I, I'm assuming here. I didn't look that up because I did not know how long the show would run with the notes. But, but I think you know. I think it was Claudia. He brained her because she was going after Carly or something. I, I, I think. think Jocelyn. I think. I think Might she, have been she Jocelyn. was. She was going after Jocelyn, and that's why that happened. But yeah. Okay, that's right. Yeah, it was. It was one of those. One of them. Uh, but I, I do love the like little callbacks to different to different things from the past. That's one of the great things I love about General Hospital is, well, callbacks. <laughs> so it's it's always a good, you know, always fun. And, of course, Delia. Gotta love Delia. <laughs> yes. And Sonny, again, he's one of those characters 
I love him sometimes, but sometimes I hate him. Yeah. At this point, I do love him because he's just playing Ava like a fiddle. And yeah. even when it looked like Ava might have the upper hand on him, you know, Olivia conveniently gets a call from the hotel because of suspicious activity. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And, and and at the end of it all, Sonny's dangling the, the flash drive in Ava's face. <laughs> nanny, nanny, boo, boo, you can't get this. Uh, and I thought that uh, my, my dad made um, a good point that if Sonny really wanted to make sure that Ava could never get that flash drive, he should have Carly hide it. There you go. Because, yeah, there is no way she's going to get to Carly. Yeah. Nobody gonna get to Carly. Mm -mm. Or better yet, hide it somewhere where nobody would expect him to hide it. Hide it in the floating rib. Because <laughs> Mac, I don't think Mac is Sonny's biggest fan, and and you know nobody would ex well, nobody would expect it. Just yeah, at all, just nobody. <laughs> oh, so with that, that is the end of our show for this week. Uh, I want to thank you guys for listening and for putting up with me working with notes on a podcast for the first time. Uh, well, I say notes on the pod on a podcast for the first time, but outside of like news stories on my other shows, but that that yeah. I'm splitting hairs. Yes. Yeah. But um, if we wanted to find Namio on the internet, where could we find her? You can find me on Tumblr at Namio's Corner, on Twitter at, at Naomi Washburn. On the fabulous rtgomer.com mm -hmm. and on Etsy at Namio Stained Glass. Hooray! And you can find me on the Twitters and the Tumblers at Gomer21XX. You can also find me on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And if you like these shows and you want to help support future shows, get better quality equipment, better recording spaces, what have you. Up, you know, site upgrades, what, just whatever. Just help support the shows in general. Um, not just this one, but my other podcasts, my other videos. Uh, head on over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx. Uh, if, you, if you feel you like to donate, you know, there you go. And you, if you if you want to donate some money and you have to worry about a budget a little bit, well, just set a limit and there you go. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be perfectly fine. Uh, so, again... Thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Namio signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.